Anybody need a mask? I mean, a okay. I'm over here yelling. Is it eight o'clock yet? Is it eight o'clock? Oh, heavens, die hard. We are so glad to see you at 9 o'clock this morning. Didn't our weather cooperate to start at 9 o'clock? We needed a little bit of warmth, didn't we? Uh, we have lots of announcements. Tom has already said I just give up on the announcements because I take so much time now. I uh, wanted to remind you that the chapel is beginning to open up. So my announcements will tell you all the different things that will be going on this week. We will start choir practice tonight at 6.30. We will wear a mask, we will socially distance, and we will meet in Fellowship Hall, but tonight at 6.30. Tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 7.30, we'll have the men's Bible study. We will wear a mask, we will socially distance at 7.30 in the morning women's bible study and it's the same bible study you can come on wednesday morning or friday morning at 10 o'clock if you can't come one of those days come the other day we would love to have you zoom bible study that's on zoom is with pastor randy it starts at seven o'clock in the evening not in the morning um if you want to do that one we have uh, you can get your to-go dinners for $7.50 at the drive through Chapel Kitchen between 5.45 and 6.15. And then you can go home and eat before you get on Zoom to watch Pastor Randy. If you need a deliverer, if you want your meal delivered, we've got people. So we can get that meal delivered. Mary Parrish will need to know so that when we buy groceries and as she's preparing... She will know that you um, want one and we'll have plenty of food. So if you have questions or if you need more information, call the office. We're there every morning and we can give you that information. I'm calling this Mary's Meals to Go. So if you on an email or if you hear me talking about Mary's Meals to Go, that's on a Wednesday night from 545 to 615. Next Sunday is our last Sunday for Chapel on the Lawn. And I have a cheerleader. Where's my cheerleader? My cheerleader, Miss Cheryl, is also the chairman of our trustees. We have lots of dignity in our chairman of the trustees, and she's a good. <laughs> Not next week, but the first week in October, which will be October 4th, we're going to go back into the chapel. We've been so blessed with great weather. We haven't had a problem this whole time we've been outside, so we just have one more Sunday to pray that we have good weather. <laughs> we will go back in at 9.30 for our first service. I'm nine o'clock. Um, yeah. Yes, you're right. Nine o'clock. When it's over, that'll give us time to clean. The next service will start at 10.30. There'll be identical services. Um, you will have to wear a mask. There will be hand sanitizer when you come in. Please use it. And you will have a designated place to sit uh, according to where a bulletin is placed on the pews. So there'll be like two on one row, one on the next. Two on one row, one on the next. <clears throat> you can sit by couples or by families. And then on the other side will be the opposite. And then when we clean, the sides will be opposite, but you can, you'll can you sit where the bulletins are placed. I'm sorry, you may not get your regular pew, <laughs> but you will get to go inside. So we're hoping that will make up for not sitting in your regular spot. <clears throat> if you have any questions, be sure and call the office or me or one of the trustees and we'll try to answer your questions. We appreciate everybody's diligence at coming and continuing to give as we've met out here on the lawn. I think it's been a wonderful and worshipful experience. And now we can do that as we go back inside. So we appreciate your um, bearing with us as we had to figure out what to do. We think everyone's been safe and we're just praying that it will continue as we go back inside.
Thank you. Would you like to, how many of you would like to be chairman of the trustees during 2020? <laughs> A huge round of applause for all of our trustees in 2020. I'm telling you, they have had some decisions to make and we are excited about next week. Uh, I want you to, I mean, sorry, October the 4th. I want you to be kind of thinking if you're going to be able to come at 9 o'clock or if you're going to come at 10.30 because we can hold 70 at a time and we've got a little bit of overflow, but we're going to we're gonna make it work. And we want you to feel safe when you walk in there. So we're going to abide by what the trustees uh, have asked us to do. I have a little bit of sad news. Sharon Parker passed away yesterday. And so uh, in your prayers this week, let's keep that family in your prayers. Um, Tom, Tom told us that the daughters will be coming in today and they'll figure out some funeral arrangements. And we will certainly let you know that as soon as we know. So if you'll go with me to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we gather today to praise you, to worship you, and to glorify your name. Be with us as we put our cares and our concerns away and we just focus on you and focus on our worship. Father, we ask that you increase our knowledge and our faith this morning. We are so dependent on you for everything. God, we love you and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Esther. Uh, you may have noticed that Paula is not here this week and next week. She's taking some well-deserved time off. And then when we get in the sanctuary, I am so excited to have both of them play their regular instruments at the same time in a worship service. So um, I probably won't even be able to stand it. You'll see all that excitement on my face next week. Let's stand as we sing, We Praise Thee, O God, Our Redeemer.
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning as we were walking up from the parking lot, my wife uh, told me, Todd, you're turning into an old man. <laughs> and I said, oh yeah, how so? She said, well, you're wearing tennis shoes with your dress slacks. <laughs> and I guess I am turning into an old man. Because you know what I said back to her? I don't care. <laughs> Let me read a verse of scripture with you before we read together. It comes from the book of Hebrews. It says in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. I'm so thankful for that passage. And uh, would you read with me now 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 41 through 45. Meanwhile... The Philistine, with a shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, and I come against you in the name of the God of the mighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now join me in prayer, if you will. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Lord, this is your time, this is your place, we are your people, and this is where we are commanded to be, is together, lifting up the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, tomorrow you know that I will turn 57 years young. And God, I am thankful for all of those years. Some good, some bad, but more good than bad. Either way, God, every year has been blessed by you, and I'm thankful for that. God. I'm thankful not only this life, but more thankful, Father, for the eternal life that you have blessed me with and that I have found through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you said, no one comes to the Father except by you. You're the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm thankful, God, that you motivated me, that you sought me out to have a relationship with you. And God, I just pray that as we find ourselves during these perilous times, that you will remind your people and you remind us that you can be found. For your word tells us in Proverbs 8, 17, that I love those who love me and I will be found by the one who diligently seeks me. And Jesus, you said the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so, Father, I pray that if there's anyone here today who's worried or nervous or uptight or anxious, about what will happen in the future help us to realize that you're in control your word tells us in psalms 55 22 to cast your cares on the lord and he will sustain you he will never allow the righteous to be shaken and so father it's because of that we can go forward in confidence knowing that we can know you and we'll find you and we'll find peace if we find you and I'm reminded again god and what you the promise you gave to us in isaiah 41 10 fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Lord, I thank you so much for the relationship that you have given me through, with you through your son, Jesus Christ. And I am reminded of the wonderful, powerful words that are in that prayer that he taught us to say when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Our hymn is, The Lord is My Salvation.
Amen. It's good to see each of you this morning as we have come together to worship and to proclaim that the Lord truly is our salvation. Just as we, we mentioned a moment ago um, with some changes, but with the time, for, for those of you who either did not get the word and apologize to visitors that were here at eight o'clock, welcome to the second service <laughs> this morning. It's so glad. I'm, I'm very impressed that, that you returned and, and we certainly Certainly appreciate that. I, I tell you one thing that um, the word that comes to mind too, and I've mentioned this many times with our with our congregation, and certainly one is flexibility. And I appreciate so much as we think about um, meeting on on the web and meeting on the lawn and meeting over there and over here and and then meeting inside. All those things, and, and you do it with a smile on your face. At, at least I think you're smiling. I'm not quite sure, but I think you are but it's good to see as we have come together to worship. H have you ever come face to face with a giant? <laughs> Giants are those things that we've heard about over the years. If you're in school, maybe Roman or, or Greek mythology. If you're familiar with uh, the Old Testament, we see in Genesis and in Exodus, it speaks of the Nephilim, the, the giants. Um, maybe everyday giants that you can see, like the Jolly Green Giant, that's not so scary. Um, maybe the giant and Jack and the Beanstalk, if you're afraid of giants, and maybe because of that, because there is a phobia called um, fee-fi-phobia. Okay, I had to throw that out there. I, I read that under dad jokes, so if you're a dad, you can share that. Uh, fee-fi-phobia, uh, fear of giants. There is also a study, I understand, an area of study called giantology that actually studies giants and, and talks about, you know, where they came from and so forth. So uh, giants, we don't tend to see much of those on a day-to-day -day basis. We, we don't look around and, 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 and see giants. However, we do know that there are giants in our midst. We do know that there are things in our lives which are, are overwhelming to us. And just as fearful as it would be as if there was a, a giant that we see face to face, it's those giants that seem to overwhelm us. It's those giants that seem to, to take us in, into areas that we, we wonder, how am I going to make the next step here? Sometimes they're, they're external giants. It could be a, a loss of a job or a loss of a relationship, um, a loss of a position, uh, a loss of power, perhaps. Those external giants that we face and how am I going to handle this? It could be some more, more internal. It could be a, a, a struggle. It could be a disappointment. Lord, how am I going to survive through this? Lord, it could be a loneliness and, and the, the weight of that loneliness bears upon us. It could be some money issues and other financial issues and, and the ways that we treat those. So as we continue looking at the book of 2 Samuel in this kind of two-part series, I like for us to look at a very familiar passage, one that you have heard since, since you were a little child, and that is the story of David and Goliath. So I encourage you, we, we read a portion of the, the scripture a moment ago. If you have your Bibles, I do invite you to turn to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now we're gonna look at different parts of the passage, but I want us to think about those giants that you face and the giants that each of us face, whether it's on a personal level or on a much broader scale as well. So beginning in verse one of chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Sukkah in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes, Damon, between Sukkah and Azekah. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the Valley of Elah and drew up their battle lines to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley in between them. So, so this is the picture. The, the Philistine army and the Israelite army are, are fighting and, and there is a standoff. So on one side of the cliff, you have those of the forces of the Philistines. On the other side of the cliff, and you have the other side, you have the, the army of, of, of Israel. And so 
to come down into the valley, kind of what we looked at last week, to come down into the valley and to fight and to have to make your way back up seemed to be suicide at this point. It was not a, a tactical uh, approach that the armies were willing to take. And so there was a standoff. And so finally, one of the Philistines is called the champion, a man named Goliath, came, came down and he stood there with his armor bearer, with an assistant, and he is standing there and he begins to look up to the armies of Israel and begins to taunt them <laughs> and begins basically to say, you come down here, one person, and let's fight. You bring your, I'm the champion, you bring a champion, and we'll come, we'll fight. Whoever fights this battle will then win the war. Now, again, Goliath, you've seen different pictures of him over the years. Um, he was a big man. Um, some would consider him a giant, um, probably between nine and ten feet tall. So his height himself was somewhat, somewhat in, impressive and intimidating. In, in the, what he wore was intimidating. He wore a tunic that had kind of like bronze fish-like um, clothing that covered his entire body with his arms and his legs. He, he had a bronze shin guards and, and bronze uh, boots to cover his feet. He wore a bronze helmet and he had various weapons. And the main weapon was this um, like a fighting weapon of a javelin, of a spear that said it was as, as heavy as a weaver's beam. So a very heavy piece of wood. And so the, the, the champion, Goliath, is, is taunting the people of Israel and the armies of Israel. And you would hope that there would be this great cry of saying, yes, certainly we can defeat you. However, as we look in the passage in chapter 17, we see these words. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and they were terrified. <laughs> they were dismayed and they were terrified. Now, like any good story, you have in the meantime. <laughs> so in the meantime, in verse 12, we see down in Bethlehem, Jesse is talking to David, his son, the youngest uh, son of his. And he says, go check on your three brothers, three of your brothers that are there fighting the war. And so he, he comes to the battle line. He comes with supplies for both the brothers and for the commanders. And he, he comes and, he, and while he's talking to his brothers, he hears this Philistine and he hears what he is shouting up to the people. And again, just to kind of set the scene, Goliath has been doing this for 40 days, morning and evening, coming up and shouting insults to the Israelite army. So verse 26, as we see that he is his use of defiance, David says this, this teenager, not a soldier, he's coming just simply to give supplies. He says this, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, Eliab, the older brother of David, basically says to David, why don't you go back with your sheep? Why, why are you doing this? Why are you making such a fit about this? Eliab, who was also not willing to come down and, and to fight, was the one that was telling David that he was crazy and, and just go, go back home. He then went before King Saul, and Saul looked at the young boy and said, you're not able to fight. You're not a warrior. You're not able to fight this particular giant, this particular battle. David finally convinces him. Saul tries to put on his own suit of armor, probably looked like a little boy wearing his dad's clothes. Finally takes that off. He goes and he, he, he gets his stones and he gets the sling. And he, begin, he comes down that cliff and he begins to face the giant, Goliath. You know the story. You've heard it many, many times. But let's pause here a second and think about giants. Now, I'm not a giantologist, but I've discovered some things about giants. First of all, giants can appear to be larger than life. 
they can be they can become much more scary and much more powerful than they really are they can appear to be larger than life they can also appear to be overwhelming <laughs> they, they can they can seem to be everywhere in fact sometimes giants even though they're big and mean and ugly it seems like they're following us and every time I turn around, I see this giant and this thing that I'm trying to deal with. They can be overwhelming. They can be larger than life. They can certainly immobilize us. We see in the passage that the, the children of Israel, the army of Israel, was they were, they were afraid. They were, they were afraid to move. I, sometimes in stress and trouble and trauma, maybe you've experienced this, that it's such an incredible experience you're not quite sure what to do. And those that have experienced this, you just freeze in place. We are immobile. We are not able to move. And the danger of not moving when there's a, a giant, a situation, a struggle, a pain, a concern among us is when we don't move, then the giant begins to own us. That giant begins to control us that giant that should just simply be at a distance and simply should be an afterthought now becomes the very, very center of my life. It's like taking a coin and, and taking the coin and getting it closer and closer to our eye that it's bigger than life, it's bigger than it should be, it's more important than it should be, and it's overwhelming. What am I going to do with this in my life? The other thing I've seen about giants is Confronting giants can be unexpected. Think about it. <laughs> David was simply coming to provide some supplies for his brothers, and suddenly he finds himself just, just a few hours later in the valley fighting a battle against an incredible um, adversary. And here was, the, here was a boy in many ways that was over, outmatched. He was overwhelmed. In fact, if you probably talk to the soldiers, both to the left and the right, they would agree this battle will be over fairly quickly. David is facing a mismatch. So back to our story. Ancient armies had three kinds of warriors. The first warrior was the cavalry. These are armed men on horseback and, and those that were in orange chariots. The second was infantry foot soldiers wearing armor and carrying swords and shields. The third were projectile warriors. We would call them artillery. <laughs> They're the ones that are that have the bows and the arrows, and they would have these, these slings, and they would the, the, the experienced slinger would put rocks or, or, or lead inside that pouch. Now, when you think about the slingshot or the sling, don't think about a little kid's toy. This is, this is a, a, a piece of a weaponry where, where a skilled um, slinger would, would sling and it would get faster and faster and faster where it would then, with that skill, would be able to go in, in a direction with great accuracy. Three ty types of warriors. Certainly, Goliath was in artillery, was in infantry, David was in artillery. That's an important distinction because from the vantage point of the mountains, from the vantage point up, up there, it looked like the advantage was overwhelmingly Goliath's. But the reality is, from the vantage point of the valley, the advantage was David. And the reason why is because and, and I'm not saying this because I'm Air Force, but <laughs> <laughs> artillery always beats infantry. No amens on that. Okay, I, I just thought I'd get one, maybe. You see, Goliath was looking for a fight, but he was looking for a fight of close combat. He was looking for a fight to be able to, to get with an adversary and, and have a combat that he was looking for. He was not expecting a projectile flying through the air. Now, again, to pause, let's, let's just be reminded as we think about how to 
defeat a giant. And again, let me encourage you to think about a giant that you're facing today. Could be personal, could be professional, could be relational, those things that do seem to be overwhelming. First of all, know that God's power is greater than any perceived giant. With all the ta taunts that, that the giant was given, David's response was, you come against me with sword and spirit, spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of all the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give you the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. <laughs> That's some pretty strong words. <laughs> David is saying, you come thinking that you have the answer, thinking that you have the power, thinking that you have the ability. I come today in the name of the Lord our God. I come today with the presence of the Lord in our midst. I come today knowing that, that through the power of God, through the power of his might, he is able to deliver even through the most unlikely circumstances. My friend, that's the same thing for us. We, we look at those giants of our lives and we say, you think there's power here. I stand before you in the power of God. I come before you in the midst of any temptation, in the midst of any trouble or trial, not knowing what the future is going to bring. But I do know that my God is able to sustain. I know that my God will be here no matter what steps, no matter what direction I take. Know that God's power is greater than any perceived giant. Secondly, as we look in our passage, let me encourage you to face the giant head on. Face the giant, the challenges that you face head on. We see this in verse 48, that the giant moves closer. Now picture this, Goliath, nine, ten feet tall, in all his regality, is, is suddenly gets angry. He sees the boy, and who are you? To, to come with me with sticks. Am I a dog? And so he runs towards him. He runs towards David. And David, unlike his brother is at the top of the hill, he actually begins to run towards Goliath. If we're going to face the giants and defeat the giants of our lives, we've got to face them head on. To be honest, to look in the mirror of our lives and know that, that again, not my power, not my might, but by the Spirit of God, God gives us the ability to be able to slay the giants of our lives. He gives us the ability to come before those giants and to be able to say face to face, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come before you. And, and there may be times in your life where you're not quite sure what's going on and you're not quite sure maybe there's a feeling in the house, just like we used to think there were monsters under our bed or in the closet. But to be able to voice and to be able to say, in the name of Jesus, away. In the power of Jesus, the power of Jesus' name, to be able to fight those battles. The power of God is within us. The third thing we see is to use the spiritual equipment that God has provided. To use the spiritual equipment that God has provided. Goliath is carrying over 100 pounds of armor. And as he, as he approaches David, scholars in, in looking at this passage have determined that as he got closer, and some scholars think that the reason why there was an attendant was because he had poor eyesight. As he got closer and as David got closer, it became an annoyance at first, and then it became a, a caution. And then all of a sudden when Goliath saw the projectile, and saw what kind of weapon that David had, there was a horror in his life because Goliath knew that in fact, he was outmatched. Just like that, the battle was over. The, the, the stone was slung, it embedded into the forehead of Goliath and you know the rest of the story. The good news we have today 
is that we still had that spiritual equipment with us. We still had the presence of God to be able to face the battles, to be able to face those Goliaths of our lives, to be able to face circumstances that we're not quite sure exactly what's going on, but we do know that God will give us the strength that we need. Beginning next Sunday, I'm going to begin a series of messages and speaking of the, the, the fact that, that, that Christ said, upon this rock, I will build my church. We're going to talk about some what it means to be a, a rock solid church <laughs> and, and kind of come back to those basics of worship and Bible study and prayer and, and those things that we, we know to be true, but to look at a way and say, Lord, guide me in 2020 and 2021 and beyond. Lord, how can we continue to grow as a church and to build disciples and to reach out to our communities to share the message, the grace, and the mercy of our God so that in spiritual battles, there can be a proper equipment to be able to touch lives, not only for me personally, but through my family and, and through the, the church that I am privileged to be a part of, to be able to share those truths and to be able to, to look at how we can have the expertise in doing all of those things, to be a rock solid church, to be able to be men and women of faith, to take the, the great history and tradition of the White Bluff Chapel and to build upon that tradition and, and know that, that the, the same Truths that were there when it, this was established, this church was established 20 years ago, are the same truths here. The same vision that was there then is the same vision that we have even today. To be able to take the truth of the Word of God and to be able to grow and to lean upon that. Giants will always be with us. And let's face it, sometimes we feel outmatched. The living our lives in the power of God always gives us the overwhelming advantage. The power of God in our lives always gives us the overwhelming advantage, no matter what giant we may face. God gives us that strength. Let us continue to live life head on and truly to face the giants that are before us. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the ability to meet this, this morning Lord, and just as we feel the coolness of your breeze, Lord, is the coolness of your presence and the awareness, Lord, that you are, are, are living and, and working among us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the warmth of the sun. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the, the joy of your warmth as well. Father, we thank you that as we come to worship and gather here, that we do so with a sense of, of anticipation of the, the days and the weeks ahead, knowing, Lord, that no matter if we're outside or inside, or no matter where we are, if we're online, or that you give us the assurance of your presence. Father, I, I pray for those uh, individual giants that, that people are facing, both here that are present and those that are watching online. Lord, to give that assurance that there is a peace that passes all understanding. To give it assurance that we, we have the spiritual equipment Lord, to be able to face the difficulties of our day. Lord, help us always to turn first to you. And Lord, to know that you are the answer to the problems and the questions and the giants of our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we sing now unto him, which will also serve as our benediction. <clears throat> 